<laughs> Weren't you fat? No. How old you here? About 14. Right, little porky you look. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Now, come on, girls. What do you think? Yeah, it's a good idea. Is it? Well, you ain't going to need it, are you? Don't get mad. You just because Mark Fowler's got the uppies, yeah? You heard about this, Nan? What? Dad's going to give Lynn Mum's wedding ring. Is he? Had a good morning, have you? <laughs> this little mole that's bothering me. I don't want you lot to think I'm favouring one over the other. Don't be stupid, Dad. You know what she's going to say. <laughs> yeah, dozy mare. I think it's all romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you Christmas pudding. Tins of... Yeah, but it's two for one, see? Oh, right. Pro- And these are the shoes we're going away at. Oh, oh very nice. Yeah. I could have got some like that. Now, low real mo. Everything's got to be just right in it. I mean, what if I was to fall if I go out of the car? <laughs> and that's the exact colour of the lipstick I was on about. Like nice, yes. isn't it? When's Dad going to give it to us? I've still got three bits to make. I don't know. Little Mo wants to know when you're going to give her the ring. Oh, and I want to say, what you're doing is really romantic. <laughs> <Don't> you? <laughs> oh, what are you lot whispering about? Oh, nothing. It's a surprise. Mo? Oh. What is? You just carry on showing us what you bought, you know? No, well, I think that's just about it, unless you want to see the overdrive. Oh, oh, oh. oh, right. Well, in that case, then. Oh, go Gary, show them. Show us what? Well, Kat, as you will learn, if you ever managed to stay with someone for longer than 20 minutes... Oh, Gary. When a man and woman are joined in holy matrimony, the one thing that they cannot do without is a very expensive ring. Really good choice, love. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's nice. Gold, is it? Never mind, Dad. Save mum's for me, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <odd. laughs> There's no shame in signing on. I've told her she's too young. She's not entitled to anything. There you go. Get old Smiler to take you down the job centre. Share the benefit of her experiences. Yeah. I stole this can have a day out, so the right old laugh. So where are you and Dad going then? We're going to visit a few memories. All the places we used to knock about when we were lads. Like the old school, Odeon, Brick Lane, Poplar, Civic Theatre. That's where we met your mum. Turned it into flats now. No. Dad's back. You didn't think it was all going to be the same, did you? It's sad, though, eh? I don't know what you mean. You. You were such a grumpy old cow. No, I ain't. Yes, you are. You must Uncle Harry done. Couldn't open his mouth without you snapping it in for no reason. Well, it ain't him that's getting on my nerves. What? Look at you. You're pathetic. You what? Hung over, knackered, chucking yourself at someone else's fella, moping round the house all day because you lost your naff little job on a market stall. You gotta get yourself a life, so. Come on, 25 quid, final offer. I've only been out of work a week. Yeah, and it happens like that. And before you know it, you're unemployed for six months and nobody wants to touch you. Yeah. And you'd know, wouldn't you? Everything. You know, everything you've just criticised me for, you do yourself. So why do you think I'm saying it? I don't know. I don't know the hell you think you are, really. Ain't like you got the right, is it? Do you want to spend the whole of your life painting your nails? And chasing after blokes ain't going to come to nothing. Trying to find things to fill up your day. You. You're worth much more than that. And I ain't going to sit back and watch it happen. Look at you. You're really clever and you're beautiful. You've got to take hold of your life, so make it what you want to be. And don't let little kids like Jamie Mitchell run it for you. But I don't know if I... Get them out of your head and go and find some work. Go to the shop, buy all the local papers and ask around. The Minute Mart, the Night Cafe. Find something, so... Don't waste yourself. Right, then I'll be in touch. Thanks a lot for your time. Right. In sickness and in health, to cherish, honour, obey and love until death us do part. But you don't obey me until you love me. Oh, oh well, going. that's sweet. You're not going to kiss the bride and all, are you, Nan? Oh, why don't you just shut up, Kat? <laughs> you want to try learning this before you open your mouth. 
Yeah, there's not much likelihood of her needing it, though, is there? Oh, you really know how to hurt a girl, didn't you? To love, cherish and obey. Do you know what? If it was me, I'd be a bit worried that I didn't know the words. I don't think it's a sign, dear. What is your problem? Will you just tell her, Nan? Come on. To love, cherish and obey. Who's Bob? Everything of it. <laughs> well, I was going to take the writing off, weren't I? Oh, what's the problem? Some bloke's birthday cake on my top table. Yeah, look, just put that on there. Now I know the difference. <laughs> you didn't seriously bit I was going to go for it, did you, Nan? That's a nice bit of cake, that is. <laughs> what is it with you? Why does everything always have to be knock-off? Always what somebody else don't want. I mean, look at them. <laughs> shut up. Just shut up, the pair of you. Your mother will be ashamed of you too. All I am mighty, and nothing's never good enough. From the minute you was born, I've been looking after you lot. I've been risking my neck, keeping my eyes open, and down that neck! No, I didn't... Listen, I know thieving's not right. I'd give you my last penny, but I just haven't got enough. So fine, you can get on with it. You don't need me. You don't need what I can get hold of. You sort yourselves out. And this was on your mother's wedding cake. Nan? Nan, we're sorry. Yeah. And we do still need you, don't we? Yeah. It doesn't matter how old or married I am or how far away I go, I'm always going to need my Nan. Here, look. We fixed it up and everything. Yeah, and I'm going to have it for my wedding cake, I am, honestly. No. But Nan, I... We just spent the last hour doing that. I said no. I'll do better by you, girl. Are you sure? Of course I am. Come on, let's get stuck in. Let's have a taste. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no idea. Right, well, I better go and have a look in the arches again. <laughs> Bye then. Bye. All right, Zoe. Watch out. We're lucky. You're a good listener, Zoe. Friends are four. Everything will work out. For both of us, yeah? Thank you. But I don't understand. some sense into her, will you? Tell her to come down here. You've blown it, Gary. What should I say, Jason? Don't lump me in with that loser. It's been a naughty boy, then. It's her that's blown it. It's you that's blown it. Look, I'll give you one last chance to open the door, yeah? With our mystery. Are you sure this is what you want, love? You made his feelings clear enough last night, Dad. You're not overreacting? No, I'm not. All right. All right, I need a father and a bride. I'm sorry, Dad, I'm just tired. <laughs> Even Gary has no idea how important this wedding is to me, in which case he's brain dead. He was just trying to tell me something. Don't you at least own the chance to explain himself? I've had enough of his excuses. <laughs> I should have seen this coming. I mean, it's not like it hasn't happened to me before, is it? Hey. <laughs> Why do I let men make me look so stupid? I'll throw a bucket of water over him if you like. <laughs> no, you're all right. I've already told him he's wasting his time. Can't resist sticking your nose in, can you? It's called solidarity. I wouldn't expect you to understand that. It's called stirring, making everything worse. Yeah. You was doing really well on your own, weren't you? Oh, can you two just stop it? I don't know why you're all so surprised anyway. He's a bloke. You've changed your tune. <sighs> I'm going out. This family's cursed. That's your last chance now, about it. Don't stop on this doorstep. What? Is it touch of the premarital? No, more than no maritals. Yeah, well, if you want my advice, sir. No, no, I don't, actually. Well, don't get involved with any woman whose name begins with S and ends in later. Yeah, well, that suits me fine. Zoe, what have they been saying in there? Has she been turning the family against me, has she? No, we never liked you in the first place. Hello. 
Hello. Hello. Martin Quarry. Sorry I didn't make that rehearsal last night. You better off out of it. Only Peggy's feeling a bit sentimental about leaving, so I took her to a nice little tapas bar. You know, get her into the Spanish mood. But you can't beat the real thing. Albondegas on the terrace. Warm summer evening. Nothing to worry about. You'd love it. Hey, princess. You haven't changed your mind, then? No. I can't face it. You apologise to Uncle Harry for me. Do I have to? I'll tell him for you. Thanks. See you later, then. Wait for me. Why should I? Don't get stroppy with me just because of what Jamie Mitchell done to you. I don't care about Jamie anymore. That's a start then, isn't it? Is it? This family ain't happy unless there's a problem. Oh. What are you saying? That I'm making a drama out of a crisis? Oh, I'm going. I'm talking to her. All right? Yeah, just through there. That's not Gary. Am I forgiven? Yeah, I'm just having a bad life. You know, they say things can only get better. Hello, girls. Can I ask you something, Uncle Harry? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. In private, it's important. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, if I could have some hush, please. Um, thank you. Thank you, Phil. That's my song! It certainly is, and there's a very good reason for that as well. You see, you thought you were here tonight to enjoy a few battered cod canapes with your friends, but no. Tonight, Wolford pays tribute to Peggy Mitchell. Come with me on a journey back in time. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for this. Where are you going? I'm going out to get some fresh air. Glad to see the back of him at last. Well, Peggy and Mitchell, our tribute to you begins in Bethnal Green. She was born in the year 1900 and... <laughs> yes, thank you, Barry. Which means she was three years old when the war ended. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> uh, aged 18, Peggy met a man who really knocked her for six. He was Eric Mitchell, also known as... The Bruiser, Bruiser from, from Bow. Yeah. A local boxer who could have been a contender. He certainly thought Peggy was a knockout. Uh, it was 1960 and London would soon be swinging and Eric exchanged one kind of ring for another. He proposed. And do you remember exactly where you were when you popped the question? Oh, yeah, on the terraces at Upton Park. Oh, 1960, me and Charlie could have been there then. Up the hammers! Yes. <laughs> they were married on the 3rd of September, a gloriously hot summer's day. And I understand Eric's best man had to do his speech from outside the pub. He charged off the reception. What was it? Yeah, well, he was barred, you see, so he had to pass his drinks through the window when the landlord wasn't looking. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time to introduce your first mystery guest. Oh. Thank you, Nat. Gary, get out of the way. What? <laughs> Peggy, your first mystery guest. I've been standing up here for half an hour like a ripe lemon. Oh, it's Sal! That's right, your maid of honour on that wedding day, all the way from Hemel Hempstead, your older sister, Sal. Oh, God. 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 Oh,
And if our handwriting expert is correct, you'll find that letter comes from your son, Grant. Well, I mean, yeah, it's just things are, are going well and Hawking is fine and... He's got himself engaged. Everyone, Peggy Mitchell, come on. Yeah, well, thanks, everyone. You enjoy yourselves. Well done. Well, Mum's happy. Looks like Barry's pulled it off. Yeah, you should tell him, not me. Well, how about I'll tell you I'm going to give you another chance for a night, Kev. Really? Yeah. My way of saying thanks. And I hope Barry appreciates it. Oh, we will, we will. please. Actually, Peggy, we, uh, we haven't quite finished yet. That was fantastic. <laughs> no, look, I'm going to do the washing. Yeah, right? no, you can. In the morning. I'm sick of that dog. Oh, his granddaddy promised me. Come on. Namaste. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please be seated for a screening of Peggy's home movies? Starting with the actual cine film from Peggy and Eric's 1960 wedding. Lights, please, Sharon. Sarah, oh, bless you, look. Always I. <laughs> Lynn, I know what you want. Four little words. Go on then, Einstein. Will you marry me? Yes, I will. Oh, I love you. Look, I'm losing the daughter again after all. Oh, boy, get out of the way. I really need to talk to you. Hello, darling. What's it about? I can't stand it round here. I've got no job, no money, no mates, no independence. No one even listens to me. Can I come out and stay in Menorca with you and Peggy? I told you, you're most welcome any time. No, I mean permanently. Can I come and live with you? Yeah, yeah, all right. Thank you, Uncle Harry. You saved my life. The blow of your